Hi there, Jeep owners. Today in your 2021 Jeep Gladiator, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Kurtz Spectrum Trailer Brake Controller. We've gone ahead and plugged in that test box, which simulates a trailer, so that way it gets the proper load so we can actually get an output from it. When you've got one connected, we, can, we do have some adjustments here. So this first one here that you'll see when you first plug it in, it's probably gonna light up white like this. And as you turn the knob, you see it gets brighter or dimmer. That's what this is. This is your brightness adjustment setting when it's all lit up white. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it nice and bright so that way it's easy to see. If we hit the button again, that's gonna cycle us to the next mode. And this is gonna be our output mode. This is where it sends the voltage to the back to our trailer brakes. And this is where you get to kind of choose how much that's gonna be uh, to see if you're getting 100% brakes or if you're gonna get somewhere in between to less. If we hit the button again, it goes over to the sensitivity mode. And this just affects on how aggressive the brakes are applied, whether they're kind of like eased on or, or more aggressive. And you can adjust that here as well. Uh, you can see again, you got full aggressive and down on the one it's just on the little blue line there, that's minimum aggressiveness. So this, this is a nice setting for uh, usually used if you've got a trailer that's getting close to the weight of your vehicle, you can kind of bump up that sensitivity if you need to, to make it a little more aggressive to uh, apply those brakes better as necessary. And of course you want to adjust your output to make sure that you've got that set appropriately as well. We also have just the regular features that you get from a, a brake controller and that's your manual slide. It's not a full slide on this one, so you're not really gonna have an in-between setting. But if we press and hold the button, that is our manual output. And it does have in-between settings, you're just not gonna get it on the fly like a manual slide if you wanted to push it halfway you could or whatever. With the manual press there, it sets it to whatever you've got your setting at. So if we got it set all the way up to the top there for our output setting, when we hit the manual, it's going to be 100%. And if we, again, if we turn it down to something lower, we're only going to get lower there. There are a couple of switches on the module itself, the little dip switches that you can change. If you don't like it like that, you can change it to where uh, the manual mode is going to be at 100% regardless of this, if that's something that you're interested in. The other switch that's located on the module there will change it from its factory mode. So right now in factory mode, if we hit the, the button there, this is, a, this is our manual output. It also lights up the brake lights at the back. If you hit that other dip switch on the module itself, you can make it so it doesn't light up your brake lights. It just puts an output to the trailer. Uh, this one, you got to be a little uh, cautious with this setting because um, under certain situations, uh, depending on the state you're in and stuff like that, if you use the manual slide, it doesn't apply your brakes. Uh, you might not be in uh, DOT compliant. So I prefer to just leave those settings the way they are, but it does have that option depending on the area you're at if you want to make those changes. We'll begin our installation here inside the vehicle. We need to determine where we're going to install our Kurt Spectrum. And we also want to locate and see if we have a factory connector that we can plug into or if we're going to need additional components. So first thing we're going to do is figure out where we're going to place it. And it would be ideal, you know, if it's in a location where you can easily access it, easily see it, and where we can also hide our components. So this panel right here in the front is actually a perfect candidate for all those things. So we're going to remove this panel here to assess and see what's behind it to see if we can mount everything back there and where we're going to put those. To remove this panel, it simply just pulls off, start at the bottom edge, pop it out, and you can just work your way up. We'll do the same thing over on the other side. So we can get that out of the way. After removing it here, we can take a close look at the back side of the panel. And it looks like a good mounting location is probably going to be right below this. This area here, this is for your interior climate control, so we can kind of get an idea of what the humidity and temperatures and stuff like that are like. So that's what this opening's for. It lines right up here with this little, it's kind of like a little fan device that kind of detects temperature and stuff. So we can probably put that right below it. Looks like we got an opening there. We don't need very much room behind our switch. We're just poking the wire through. The rest of the switch is all gonna be outside. So it'll be right here, which is pretty accessible. So I think that should work out pretty well. We also need to figure out where we're gonna mount our module. <clears throat> the module's a little bit bigger, but we can put this pretty much wherever we want. So it's kind of nice. And looking behind the panel here, it looks like we probably got some areas here that we can mount our module as well. Looks like there's tons of room up in here to where we could probably mount our module right here. So now that we've got an idea of where we're gonna put those components, let's first determine if we need additional components to get this installed, or if we're gonna be able to 
use factory wiring that's on the vehicle. It's already there. So first thing is to determine, it, do you even have a seven way at the back of your vehicle or not? If you do have a functioning seven way at the back of the vehicle, then you probably have this connector. If you don't have a functioning seven way at the back of the vehicle, then I would recommend kit ETBC7. That comes with everything you need to get a functioning seven way at the back and have all the proper wiring you need to get a brake controller installed. But we have a factory seven way. And if we have factory wiring, it would be located on the harness right up here, taped to it. And there it is. We're just gonna pull that down. And here's our factory brake controller connector right here. This will have all the wiring that we need right on it. So you could use the wiring that comes in the kit and you could just hard splice this on there if you wanted to. Or we do sell adapter cables here at eTrailer and that's what we're gonna be using. It's a lot cheaper uh, than a full ETBC7 kit. So if you got this full setup, you can get just this cable that'll allow you to plug into this connector and plug into this end. That connector is from Kurt and it is available here at eTrailer. So I'm just gonna grab that connector for you so we can take a look at it here. This is what our connector will look like. This end plugs into the vehicle and this will plug right into our Kurt brake controller. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this connector in now so we can see how long this is gonna be to get an idea if this is gonna be long enough to reach where we're planning on putting our components. This simply just plugs in. So you just gotta line it up properly. until it clicks in just like that. So now that we've got that located and we verify we've got all our connections here, we can start getting the rest of our components mounted up. We're gonna start with our switch and that's gonna be mounting directly to this panel here. So we're gonna determine where we're gonna be placing this. It's gonna go in this location right here. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our paint stick and mark these holes. And now we can take a 5 16 drill bit to drill those out. All right, so we got that out of the way. Looks like there's a couple of rough spots there. We're just gonna clean up a little bit. If you need to, you can use a razor knife to do so. Just clean off that mess there just to make sure we can easily get our components installed. We'll then take our switch, put it, our switch plate here, put it in place. Take the rubber gasket that comes in your kit. We're going to slide it down through both components. Sometimes it's easier if you take this, slide it through there first, and then kind of start it and line it up with this one. Because it is supposed to be a tight fit in order to hold this snugly into position. We'll then take the screw that comes in our kit, drop it down into the little rubber piece. It's got a threaded insert inside there to kind of swell and spread this out to hold it in place. And then we just snug that down and that's going to hold our switch plate where it needs to be. We can now start feeding our wiring through. There is a little sticker that's on the end here. I pulled that sticker off. It makes it more difficult to feed this through. And you do get a second plate here that's pre-installed on the switch. This is if you want to use the sticker that comes in the switch. There's some double-sided adhesive. You can put that on here and then just stick this on. But if you do that, your wiring is going to come out the front and we want to hide it behind the panel and make it look nice. So we're not going to be using this, this cover or the sticker for it. We're gonna take our screwdriver here and if you look, there's like these little, little tabs. We're just working our way around, popping it off of those tabs to get this released from here. There we go. And then we can slide off that plate since we're not gonna be using it. And we'll take our pins here. We're gonna gently slide these through that opening in the center. And then we'll click our switch into position. We want the LEDs to be upright. So we're gonna twist our wire a little bit there. Get our LEDs in the upright position. And then we'll line up. You see there's like a, 
kind of like a little semi-circle cutout. You'll line those up with the notches and then just push it into place. So we're going to do a quick test fit of our paneling here. We're going to take the panel and just see that, make sure we, this does snap back into place properly like we want it to, to make sure we don't need to do any minor modifications to make everything work. So I'm just feeding the wire up in here. You don't really have to go too crazy with the feeding of the wire because we're just, again, yeah, it's just a quick test, you know, little test fit here. And everything looks good there on our test fit. So we'll just pull this panel back off now and we'll get our module mounted up. Now our module, we can go ahead and pull this wire through as well. You don't have to leave it there. That was just so I didn't pinch it when I was putting the panel on. For our module, you do get some double-sided adhesive for this, so we are going to use a combination of that and a couple of zip ties to get this mounted in there. So I'm going to go ahead and peel off the adhesive backing here. We're going to stick this in place on the back side of our module. And before I pull off this side, I'm going to show you real quick where we're going to mount it and what location. So our wire is going to probably go up like that. And there's a black module right here that has a bunch of slits in it right here. We're going to be mounting this right to the front of this module and we'll just run some zip ties in one of the slits and then right out the other, feeding it through the slits here on the side. We'll put one on each side and we'll, put, we'll peel this backing off first and then we'll zip tie it down and that'll snug it nice and tight. We'll keep our adhesive and turn the module doesn't move and those two zip ties should hold it in place uh, very well. So now that we know where we want it, I'm going to put the side that is just a connector end facing down so it's easy for us to plug our switch into. This guy here, we can go ahead and plug this in uh, to our harness if we want to make things a little bit easier. So because that wire is kind of short, we might have a difficult time plugging into that harness later. Or you could just bring the harness wire uh, up through here because it is going to fit. And that way after you get this zip tied, we can make that connection and then just poke those wires back up in there. So I'm going to go ahead and peel off the backing now and zip tie it to that module. So you can see here I slid the zip ties through those openings like we talked about. To do that, you can see the end here. I just put a couple of bends in it. I kind of like bent it a little bit and then I moved back and bent it a little more, bent it, bent it, bent it to give it a curve. That way I was able to hook right around the opening and get those two zip ties through. To determine which slit was the appropriate slit to slide them through, I just held the module up there to see, you know, kind of the spacing that I needed. Now that we've got their zip ties in, we can go ahead and just slide that connector up there out of the way. Grab our zip tie, bring it through our module. We can go ahead and attach the one here, get that one started so it doesn't move anywhere on us. And we'll get the other one started here. And I've gone ahead and peeled off the adhesive backing uh, before I stuck this module up here to this point. This way I can kind of just snug these down and get that module where I want it to go. And I want to kind of put it up as high as I can there. There we go. And between those zip ties and our adhesive backing, I should hold that in there nice and solid. You can grab a pair of snips to take the excess zip tie that you've got sticking out there and remove that, make things a little bit cleaner. Then we'll grab those wires that we kind of fit up here and get these plugged together. And we'll now start getting our switch put together. We'll now need to assemble the connector end for the switch that we put into place. It comes disassembled like this so you can slide them through that opening. Your pins will slide in the back here. 
We're going to start with our white wire, and this is the release tab here at the top. So with the release tab at the top, with your door open at the bottom there, we're going to take our wires. You'll see that they have a little tiny raised uh, tang on them there. That goes where the little raised portion is there at the top. This is going to start on pinhole two. You'll find the diagram in your instructions on where to slide these in. And we're just going to slide it in. I like to give it just a little bit of a tug there, nothing real hard. Just make sure that it clipped in all the way. And we're just going to repeat putting our wires in place now going down the line. So it's going to go white, green, brown, blue, black, and then red. So I'm going to go ahead and get those slid together. So we've got them all slid in now. We can close up the other side just push that down make sure that each of the little tabs on each side lock into place there and again just double check your wires make sure none of them are going to come out everything looks good there nice and snug we'll now take our connector and plug it into our module and at this point now we're ready to reinstall this front panel but before we do so we're going to take our wiring here kind of clean it up with some zip ties to make it nice and neat so we don't have things hanging down like this and there ain't going to be any rattles going on then we'll snap that panel back into place. And we can just stick our panel back into place now. Looks like everything's working okay. Our knob does light up. So that means we've got the power we need. Looks like we can adjust it. So uh, at this point, we're ready to plug it into our trailer to see that everything's working properly. We're gonna be using a test box here. So we'll get that hooked up and we'll come back and make sure that we've got all the necessary outputs and things are working the way it's supposed to. This is a proportional brake controller, so we're going to go ahead and hit the brakes. And you can see it's not lighting up very, very aggressively there at the back, but we are getting output. And that's because we're not moving. We've got no inertia right now, so uh, that's why we're getting such a low output. But you do see that it is outputting, so it is working the way it's supposed to. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you is I'll disconnect the test box that we've got here and it should light up a blue color to let you know that hey your trailer has been disconnected and i've disconnected our tester and i'm gonna go ahead and plug it back in and that completes our installation of kurtz spectrum trailer brake controller on our 2021 jeep gladiator